Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name is Rodney Dupree and today we got a cool show for y'all. It's our fifth installment of the cooking class and we got some good ones today, y'all. And on the agenda we have pasta laya, fried chicken, green bean casserole, jacked up green bean casserole, coleslaw two ways, white Russians, and Holly's homemade brownies. So y'all hang on, Cajun Living and Cooking is fixing to start right about now. Tight line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like they did long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana man. Line, trap line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens, that's how we live, and it sure feels fine. All right, y'all, my name's Rodney Dupree, and this is my special guest for every class. Our name's? I'm Holly Pilgrim. And we've been having a blast. This is our fifth one. Yeah, it's been going good. And we've got a bunch of folks out here tonight, and um, we're going to start off with cocktails tonight. Okay. And it's White Russian, which looks resembles this, as a matter of fact. But um, let me tell you a little bit of white, about White Russian. Okay. Uh, it's a cocktail made with vodka, coffee, liqueur, and cream. So all you need is these three. Uh, a little bit of history, the traditional cocktail known as a Black Russian first appeared in 1949. Yeah, it becomes a white Russian with addition of cream. So you just add one more thing to it. So the first mention of white Russian cocktail, it appeared in California's Oakland Tribune in 1965. So it hadn't been around really that long, two years older than me, but all right. It, it, six years. Whoa, <laughs> that's what you get for being a teacher right there. It. it it saw its first surge in the popularity in the 1998 film, The Big Lebowski. I didn't get to see the movie. But on a number of occasions throughout the movie, he refers to the drink as the Caucasian. So, uh, vanilla ice cream can be, can be used instead of the cream if you want to make it frozen. So, I guess in the summer you would want to do that part. But I got a couple variations before we drank a couple. A blind Russian is no cream with Irish cream in it. A mudslide is the blind Russian with both creams. The white Canadian uses goat's milk instead of half and half. Mm -hmm. The skinny Russian uses skim milk. Okay. The white Cuban uses rum instead of vodka. And the dirty Russian uses chocolate milk with no cream. So there's a lot of variations on it. We're fixing to take a few sips and we got a good guest tonight. Okay. We have Mr. Wally Tallion, who is the Jambalaya Festival president, and he's gonna cook pasta laya for us. So y'all hang on, he's coming up now. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages three and 18 with a life-threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com the new, completely renovated Fred's on the River Food Mark, located at the Port Vincent Bridge, is now back open and better than ever. With biscuits, coffee, and sandwiches ready every morning at 4.30 to get you started. And a full breakfast menu from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. featuring homemade hash browns, pancakes, eggs, and our country-style biscuits and gravy. Our newly renovated store has all your needs from local vendors, plus cold beer, lottery, gas, and tobacco. Try our new lunch and dinner menu featuring our famous boat launch burger, overstuffed New Orleans style pressed po' boys, 100% beef hamburgers, pizza, and by far the best onion strings you have ever tasted. 
So come by and enjoy Fred's on the River Food Mart, where we've come back bigger and better than ever, but we haven't lost our hometown feel. Galvez Hardware and Outdoor Cooking has the largest selection of grills and outdoor cooking supplies in South Louisiana. Let our team help you select the right equipment for your cooking needs. Our unique inventory of cookware is second to none. Whether you are looking for a new cast iron or ceramic coated pot and burner, a new charcoal, gas, or pellet grill, or anything to help you with your outdoor cookout, come to Galvez Hardware because good food brings people together. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, y'all. I got Mr. Wally Tallion right here, who is one of the best cooks in Ascension Parish, if not the whole world. And he is the president of the Jambalaya Festival, and he's cooking pastalaya. <laughs> so, I'm, we're going to start getting things going, and then we'll tell folks what you got going as you get the fire lit and get things going in there. Okay, you want to start with the pork first? Sure, sure. All right, y'all. Now, a lot of times Wally cooks for lots of people, so it's rare to have him cooking this little bit of food. You know, it's, he's usually got 47 pounds of meat or something in there and feeding a thousand people. So, tell me what you're doing there. There's so many different ways people got think they're going to start with grease, fry the meat down. I start with water because of the meat is going to release water. A big content of the meat is water. So I'll start with water and I don't start with no grease. It might might not be the easiest way to do it, but <laughs> for me it is. Gotcha. Gotcha. If, uh, so in there you have a pound and a half of pork. pound and a half of pork and uh, a half a pound of sausage. That gives you two pounds of meat to one pound of spaghetti. And it would be the same thing if he was using rice. Half a pound of, of uh, chopped onion. Okay. Now, some people would uh, start with grease, brown the meat, take it out. Then they put the sausage in and take it out. Then they put the, the onion and smother that down. So it's just a three step deal. That's not necessary from my point of view, especially if you're doing a lot of bigger bulk cooking. Right, right, and pulling I, in and pulling out. It takes a lot more time, and you're taking a, a lot. You have to watch it a lot closer, let's put it that way. There's so much of a chance of scorching the meat, scorching the onions, or whatever. The sausage is perfectly they'll stick and burn on you in a heartbeat. So why isn't this meat sticking to the pot? What's that? Why isn't this meat sticking to the um, black skillet? Because I, I started with uh, water, and the after it gets going pretty good, it'll start making its own water, and I'll just let it simmer like that. Then I, once I see most of the water is out of the meat, then I'll put the onions on top of that, and do the same thing. Just get the water out of the onion, melt them down pretty good. How many people does this recipe uh, serve? Usually, you get six people to a pound on on rice. You can get about seven on a spaghetti. Gotcha. Now this was uh, pork steaks already cut up from the store that we cut in uh, bite-sized pieces. And I want to talk to you a little bit about pastalaya. Um, when do you think pastalaya first started? I mean, we had brown spaghetti since a kid, but when do you think pastalaya? I'd say 12, maybe 15 years ago. Some people will put tomato in it. They like tomato with it. So I, I don't use the tomato. I do it like a traditional jambalaya type deal that I would do jambalaya. Instead, put the spaghetti instead of the rice. But the, a lot of people think it's, and it's actually easier to do the pasta laya. Because if you run short of water, you can add water. On that rice, that's a different ball game. <laughs> Once you got that water in there, yeah. You can't be adding them, but you can tell when you when you put the rice. If you're doing a jambalaya, when you pour your rice in, after you done brown your meat or dip with the onion, the sausage and everything, you add your water, get it to boil and taste 
get your seasoning right, dump the rice in the center of the pot. And the rice has to come out in a little pyramid out of the water. If it doesn't come out of the water, you got too much water. So you can boil it a little harder and it might help it some, but uh, it just, just give you a little wetter jambalaya, that's all. Gotcha. When, when do you think was the first time you ever cooked a pasta lot, Wally? Uh, we have a big cookout, a bunch of my cousins and out of Easter every year. Mm -hmm. And we got about four or five of us doing different different stuff. We do all crackling, we do uh, pasta lot, we do jambalaya. Uh, a little bit of everything, smaller potatoes, all kind of different. Everybody's gotcha. got a different dish to do, and it? <laughs> turns out real good, and we all have a good time doing it, you know. Where do you think this recipe comes from? I don't know. Um, like I said, the first one that I seen doing it was uh, that cousin of mine, in, of uh, Kurt Ruye. And, and he does a, uh, puts Rotel in his. Uh-huh. And so he possibly almost invented it somewhere More or less, maybe. Yeah. and they call it uh jambagetti mm, that's, mm, mm. that's what he started with jambagetti so it's pastalaya or jambagetti whatever you want to call it now in our second class we did brown spaghetti which i learned from my grandma and that's way before pastalaya was even invented we just called it brown spaghetti now, is there other things you can put in the pasta lye beside the basics that we're doing? Well, if you want to put the greens in it, or mm -hmm. if you uh, prefer the, the rotel, it's all whatever you want. Right, you can go onions, you can go, uh, yeah. excuse me, mushrooms, tomato, you can even use deer, but you would want to tender that first. Yeah, uh, people think they can put beer in there and, if somebody that don't drink, they can taste that beer. Ah, I guarantee ah, you. Ah, I've done ah, it with people cooking jumble up. You can taste that beer in it. Gotcha. Now, how long are we going here with this? This is going to brown or going no, to? No, I'm, I'm not going to brown it. Uh huh. All I do is get the water out of it. That you got less of a chance of sticking and burning if you try to really brown it. And I would have a lot hotter fire. So I'll. I'll put the onions in and get the water out of it. All right. And we've yet to add some seasonings. You know, we have meat and we have onions now. The seasoning, I don't add until I'm, I'm ready to put the spaghetti in. Okay. Uh, okay. Now. If you're, doing, if you're doing the seasoning ahead of time, a lot of that seasoning will be going away in the, in the vapors, you know. And, so you're wasting, I'm just wait, wasting it. Yeah, I wait until last. I, I got a pre-mixed seasoning, but it's only granulated garlic, uh, cayenne pepper, black pepper, and, and salt. I put a little bit of MSG in it. A little flavor enhancer. Yeah. So, for y'all out there, we're gonna put this recipe on Facebook and you'll better go on Facebook and see Wally's pastalaya, which is just enough for the family. Unless you're the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> so you're adding a little more. Now, now what exactly are you looking for on the onions? Like I said, I'm just getting the water out of them, melt them down, that's all. They say put a glaze to them. I ain't never worried about no glaze. Just get <laughs> where you don't see the big pieces in whatever you're cooking. Uh huh. Get the onions down where they almost disappear, you know. So, so th this don't seem like a. Uh, it takes a long time to cook pasta laya. Now, at at this point, not going to the glaze. But what would be the next thing you're gonna do? I'll put the sausage in and do the same thing. Just keep adding your water. And uh, get the get the water out of the salsa. They got water in there also. So then you add your water back before you put your and and what I ah. do on all of the pots that I cook in, I try to get a measurement on the water level when before you put your rice or before you put your uh, spaghetti. Measure from the top of the pot to the water level. 
And that way you can go, if it comes out good, you can reuse that measurement, you know? <laughs> so that's, I got a whole bunch of different pots that I cook in. If I'm cooking 10, 15, 20, 25, maybe 85 pounds or 100, I got a measurement that I go by. It makes it so, so easy. If I wanted to, you can put everything in it together and just add your bunch of water and boil it until your meat gets tender. Your onions kind of wilted down. Get your water level right, put your, your rice or your uh, spaghetti in it. And it saves so much time. What's the biggest pot of pasta lye you ever cooked? I've done a uh, Jerry Lane Chivalry. I was doing 1,300 bowls of jambalaya. I mean, a uh, pasta light. Wow, and 1,300. With one pot, we put a 100 pound of spaghetti in it. So it takes a, takes a lot of stirring. That's an 85, <laughs> 85 gallon pot. Now it's starting to look uh, happy, is what I like to say in the, in the pot right there. What you gotta watch also is that on the side of the pot, mm -hmm. with, a, with a hotter fire like I'm doing now, it starts getting a, a brownish, sticking to it. Mm -hmm. You got to keep putting water on it, keep washing that off because if you let it stick, it'll have black flakes coming up in oh. your, your jambalaya and your rice. Yeah, it, it'll keep building up. And get, getting larger as you go. What I learned that time we were out here cooking and you were showing me and Todd how to cook jambalaya, those fellas had a spray bottle and they would spray it on the side of the pots yeah. to, 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 uh, I guess just drain it in there. Well, you got to have water anyway, so why not just spray it on the pot? I keep a garden hose handy, and I just squirt it with garden hose, keep washing it off, <laughs> and take your paddle and scrape it. Like it's, it's filling up pretty heavy. Right. right. I don't know if y'all can see that out there, the, the crust on the side. Well, what do you think's easier, Wally, making a jambalaya or making a pasta lye? Which one's easier? The pasta lye is for me in the bigger pot. No. These little pots, they they get the best of me. It don't matter what I'm cooking. It's just if you were making a stew where you could just take your time and let everything simmer down or whatever. But here you you're in a different bowl game. All right, all right, y'all. While he's got this going, we're gonna be adding the sausage in, and then we'll be putting some water at that point, or the, the water then the seasoning. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'll put the water, bring it to a bowl, and then add the seasoning and get the, make sure the seasoning is right. Okay. And uh, then we put the spaghetti in. All right, y'all, we're gonna brown it up a little. We're gonna add some water. Hang on, it's fixing to get good. Fred's Bar on the River has something for everyone. Open seven days a week. Football on the big screen TV, pool tables, golf, darts, and the new boat launch bar. Ladies night on Wednesdays, Thursdays is open mic night. Karaoke on Fridays with DJ Rocky. Live bands on Saturday and Sundays. The Giant River Bar is air conditioned and ready to book your company's events or your Christmas parties. Come out and enjoy a good time on the river. Monogramming Unlimited specializes in corporate and small business embroidery on a wide variety of clothing and accessories like shirts, jackets, hats, bags, and much more. Our screen printing department is perfect for you. A very affordable way to advertise your business, club, team, or event. We also handle business cards, promotional items like pins and huggies, trophies, medals, plaques, banners, and signs. No job is too big or too small. Call or come by today. Porsche's Sausage, located in French Settlement, is bringing back that old country smokehouse flavor and customer service. This third-generation family, dating back to 1946, has all your favorites. Hall cracklings, beef jerky, head cheese, and smoked sausage. Like the old days of Donald Porsche, our on-site butcher has all your specialties. Smoked tasso and hocks, andouille, meat sticks, and Uncle D's Bayou Blend. Come and experience Porsche's sausage. It's a wonderful thing. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, Wally, tell me what you're doing right here with the, with the tape measure you got going. Measuring the water level. Okay. And just 
add a little bit more to it. Now what he has done is he's took the noodles and it was pretty neat the way he broke it. We got three different segments of noodles in here. So it ain't half, it ain't the whole one. You got three pieces in there and that's so whenever you're eating it, it's not slopping all over your face while you're trying to eat it. Now what he did that we didn't show earlier, he's put the water in it, granted the rest of the water. He's got the sausage in it already now and he's put the seasoning. And I'm gonna tell you what, he don't wanna tell everybody about the seasoning, but uh, we're actually gonna put it on Facebook and you'll be able to see what seasonings are in there. So we did add a little kitchen bouquet, and I wanna say it's not against the law to use kitchen bouquet. Everybody thinks it's against the law. It's all right. But in competition, you cannot use it. But you don't wanna come out with, what we called it? White rice food, or white, you know, gotta have some color in it. So, you, you've got the water where you want it now. Well, if you're doing a gumbo, you do everything the same way. You brown and you uh, smother your meat down like I do. Uh, sausage, andouille, onion. Instead of, I, I'll put roux in it, but I, I, I go with a caramel color. I don't like, the darker you put the roux in there, the more roux taste you've got to ball the heck out of it. It's so damn, everybody say, go with a dark roux. That's bull. That's the dark roux right there, there. Yes, and all we did was put one tablespoon in there of, of this. It just, just don't make sense to uh, add a dark roux. I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of a dark roux, but like the bell pepper and the celery. Give me, give me that caramel color, and then I can dock it up from there. <laughs> makes it so much easier and faster and, and what he had said earlier i don't know if y'all i don't think we had the camera on while you were saying that if you put bell peppers and celery in there well it, it takes away from all your other flavors that you have in there you say you might as well not put some of the stuff in there because it'll eat it up especially if you're doing a seafood gumbo or something like that it just the money you spend on seafood you want to taste seafood i don't i put so much extra stuff uh seafood base or uh, cream of shrimp, but I just overload it with, when I taste that, it's gonna taste seafood. Gotcha, gotcha. That's what I'm looking for. All right, well you balling now. Yep. And I wanna tell y'all, while it came by earlier, and these same ingredients that are in this pot, which is a small version for him, he cooked one earlier today and brought some over here. And uh, I'm, I'm, it's usually Holly doing all the tasting, and it's actually me getting the taste today. So let me see what you got there, Wally. Wow. Wow. Yeah, you don't need no celery and bell pepper in that. That's good. Meat's tender. To I like to have the, the spaghetti where it's wet, more wet. Because that's something you don't want to have is a dry, the dry spaghetti to try to eat in a pasta layer. Get it a little on the wet side. That don't hurt at all. Y'all excuse me while I eat a little while. So, now you already had the right amount of water, or where you wanted the water from the mm -hmm. top. Yeah. And that's all the water that you're gonna put in there. Like I said, if I, I see where I need some, I can add some. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay. It don't take away from it. It ain't like uh, adding in, once your rice is in, it's done. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, you used to that big old paddle you stirring over there. Mm -hmm. that, that, that spoon fits you pretty good? <laughs> <laughs> no, it don't. <laughs> Yeah, so. Every time I see you, you got a paddle and a hundred pounds of rice or something, you know, and it's really neat to show everybody how they can do one at home, you know. So, what you looking for now? You're you're trying to basically trying to, submerge. I'm to submerge this uh, spaghetti down. Okay. And then I'll I'll keep flipping it over until it starts soaking up most of the water. And if I see it soaking it up too fast, I'll just add some water. Okay. But, uh, and all you. I'll put the lid on later 
Mm -hmm. after, I, after I boil it for a while. Okay. And then you'll check one more time to see that the water's right, or once you put the lid, once I put the lid, it's over. It's over. Gotcha. And I can, I can always add after I, I check it about 15 minutes and look at it. Uh huh. Gotcha. All right, y'all. This is good stuff. Um, he's gonna get the lid on it. We're gonna put it aside. Wally, you rocked it, buddy. This is good. This is really good. Y'all gonna have to check out the recipe. Hey, we got more stuff coming up. Y'all hang on. Corral fish season is coming soon. It's time to move into the 21st century with the new high performance cookers and super boilers. With our new state of the art technology, the 120 quart pots come to a boil in under seven minutes and the return boil in under two minutes. This fast return boil is key to perfectly cooked crawfish, all while using far less propane. Now, no more mushy crawfish using the old, outdated slow boilers. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life-threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com You're, You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, Holly. We've got some really good stuff going today. Uh, I want to save. I'm saving the brownie for last. Uh, all righty. But I've got leaders fried chicken and coleslaw on a slider right here, and I'm gonna try to get a little, a little, a little, just a little bite. Let me know if I get something on my face. All but right, uh, in know. the class, what what'd you like today out of the things we done? Well, I enjoyed the pastalaya session today because I learned so much. So that was my favorite part. What was yours? Uh, the brownie? What you think? The brownie. The brownie. Okay, good. I want to say one more to the sponsors, though. Thanks for DS Tar. Thanks for Leaders Fried Chicken. And thanks for Capital City Produce. And I'm going for it. Mm hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, Lou. <laughs> I love it.